Have you already reached a certain level of English and stopped seeing any results? In this video, I am going to share some tips with you, which will help you get your English off the ground. So grab your cup of tea or coffee and let's start! As many of you, I started learning English when I was at school. If we count the number of years we study the English language at school, by the time we finish it, we must speak English fluently and flawlessly. But as we can see, very few of us can do that. What's the problem? Why do we fail to get fluent in English at school? The most obvious answer is that we study English without any purpose. Remember yourself being a schoolgirl or a schoolboy. Did you actually know why you were studying English? I personally didn't. Looking back at my school years, I realized why English might be vital for me only when I was 14. 14? How much I lost? So first of all, you should define your purpose of learning English, so that when you feel bored or disappointed, you could have a look at the goals you set before and get your second wind. At the age of 14, I found the aim which motivated me to learn English. It was the program Flex. I wanted to participate in it and it was my dream to go to the US and spend a year in an American host family. A great motivation, you might say. Yes, absolutely. So if you are stuck at A2 or B2 level, maybe you are not motivated enough to achieve better results. Think about your aim, write down it, and every time you choose laying on the sofa instead of laying and practicing English, look at your objective. When I finally found the aim of learning English, it was time to master my English. Honestly, English classes at school cause only fear, frustration and disappointment. I don't know whether you faced this situation or not, but I remember clearly that during the lessons I was praying to God that I wouldn't be asked to answer the monologue at the board. It's strange, as I prepared thoroughly for every lesson. Now, actually, I understand that it was the fear that impeded my learning. I was afraid of the English teacher, as she was constantly shouting at us when we made mistakes. And that's the next piece of advice. Find the teacher who will suit you. You and your teacher should be on the same wavelength. Your teacher should understand your goals, find the right methodology and choose the materials which will evoke interest in you. With traditional ways of learning, it's easy to become bored and even lose your motivation. If you see that you don't get pleasure from learning and the only idea which is in your head – when is the end of the class? Oh, I'm so tired! For sure, you have to change the current way of learning. Add some fun to the process of learning. For example, when I learn Spanish, I try to find books and videos which are interesting for me. I think I've mentioned this tip in the previous video, but I still want to make emphasis in this video as well, as I truly believe that this tip is very crucial. When you learn English or any other language, you should consume a lot of information in that language. If you want to become an advanced English speaker, don't read only books or listen to podcast consume information from different resources related to areas like cooking, politics, education, psychology and so on. Broaden your horizons and boost your vocabulary. At 15, I started practicing yoga daily and I found different videos in English. Certainly, at first I understood a little, but in two weeks I could get at least half of what the YouTubers were saying. In such videos, the vocabulary is almost the same and the phrases like stand up, bend your knees, breathe in, breathe out are constantly repeated. And thanks to that you memorize these phrases quite fast and you don't even have to write them down and cram them. If you're a passionate cook, for example, instead of googling a recipe in your native language, find the recipe or watch the video in English. So now it's 14.36 and I'm cooking lunch with the help of chef Gordon Ramsay. Let's watch a piece of video together and you'll see why I love using cooking videos for learning English. The potato gives it a nice, light, sort of creamy, fluffy texture. Just cut them in half, take your spoon and scoop the inside of those potatoes. Cut them in half, take your spoon and scoop the inside of those potatoes. In this sentence, the verb to scoop might be of interest. It means to remove something with the help of a spoon. Not a very common word, I guess, and probably you won't find it in the textbooks. And this is one of the reasons why I like using videos. You cook and simultaneously you learn new words and practice your listening skills. How can you fail to learn English if your English teacher is Gordon Ramsay? 
This will undoubtedly make the process of learning English more captivating. Not to mention that, that in these ways you will be able to enrich your vocabulary as well as practice listening skills. What really helped me learn English words was different apps like Quizlet, where you can learn words even if you are in a traffic jam. The more words you know, the more confident speaker you become. Having rich vocabulary will not only help you become a more effective communicator, it will also boost your listening, reading and writing skills. Speaking of reading, if you think that nowadays it's possible to achieve fluency without reading books, you are very, very wrong. Listening and speaking are of great importance, that's for sure. However, you shouldn't forget about reading. First of all, books are an excellent source of words and useful phrases. Secondly, your brain unconsciously memorizes what is grammatically correct. There are lots of grammar rules to modify a beginner as well as an intermediate speaker. Take for example articles. Let's take this sentence for example. It was summer of 2022 when we decided to move to London. What article should we fill in here? The, a, the summer of 22, a summer of 22 or summer of 22. Difficult, isn't it? The definite article should be used here, the summer of 2022, as the reference is made to a particular summer. However, if you are an avid reader, you'll naturally learn which article should be in the sentence. You'll intuitively know that in the sentence like it was early summer, we should use no article, it was early summer. In the sentence like summer passed, the definite article is a must, the summer passed. Well, don't be so happy to shut your grammar books. Obviously, at first you should learn the basics from there and then continue learning from books, movies, TV series and so on. Another thing why I adore reading is that it can also improve your spoken fluency and pronunciation. When I'm reading books in Spanish, for example, I choose one paragraph and read it aloud. But I don't just read it in order to quickly finish it. At first, I read the first sentence from the paragraph and mark pauses and stresses. If I'm not sure how to pronounce some words correctly, I look them up. Having done all this with the rest of the sentences, I read the paragraph again. But this time I focus on getting the intonation right and making the speech flow. Try doing this the next time you read a book in English. And finally, the most important thing is to practice English regularly. Learning any subject should be consistent, as consistency is your key to success. When I decided to learn English, I made it part of my daily schedule. I devoted 15 or 30 minutes or one hour daily to English learning. In my head, I rooted deeply the idea that English was as important as sleep and meals, so I couldn't skip it from my daily routine. If you cannot practice English daily, set your own pace. There isn't any fixed rule like study English four times a week and you'll achieve fluency. No, we are unique and not everyone is able to devote every day to English. If you have time to study twice a week or only at the weekends, that's fine. Anything that works for you, but be consistent. If you are a consistent learner, you'll probably see your progress and seeing the results, you'll be even more motivated than before. Let's sum it up. Tip number one, find the purpose for learning a language. Tip number two, try to overcome your fear as it's the main obstacle on the road to success in studying English. Tip number three, find your ideal teacher. Tip number four, use various materials. Tip number five, don't forget about reading. Tip number six, practice daily. If you still have any doubts about how to learn English, Spanish, German or Chinese, you can take a couple of private lessons with us in our online school English with Net. Check the link to our Instagram in the description below and write to us straight away if you have any questions. See you in the next video. Bye!